Hello and welcome to MedCom Benefit Solutions and Earth Charter International webinar, Business and Ethical Leadership for Sustainability. My name is Casey Hope. I am the Marketing Manager at MedCom Benefit Solutions and I want to thank you so much for joining us today, um, for being here, for giving your time and attention to us as, as we start to kind of navigate these tough waters of, of our current situation for businesses that we're in and, and what we're facing and, and how MedCom is finding ways to help others um, in the transition of going back to work and going back to the office and, and, and just better ways to, to help our own businesses and help ourselves in our personal lives. Um, I am joined today um, by three individuals. Um, Mallory Hopkins is a marketing associate with MedCom. We have MedCom Benefit Solutions President Michael Bracken and the course facilitator, Dr. Chris Beener, all with us today. Um, before we get started, before I turn this over to Michael, I want to go ahead and let you guys know that this presentation is being recorded. Once we wrap up this afternoon, I'll be able to send that recording and a copy of the slide deck to each of the individuals who joined us today. So you will have this information right at your fingertips. You will have um, information about the course, um, how to register, or you know, just looking back at, at the topics that we are going to cover today. Um, also, if you have questions about um, Earth Charter, if you have questions about MedCom and about some of the things that we do um, within our company, if you have questions about the course, please put those um, in the questions panel. Feel free to type any question that you have for us, um, for Michael, for Mallory, or for Dr. Beener. And we will address those questions at the end of the webinar. So with that being said, I will now turn this over to uh, President of MedCom, Michael Bracken. Thank you, Casey. And I want to thank you, Casey and Mallory, as well as Dr. Beener, for all the time and attention and investment you've made in this uh, conversation we're going to have, uh, because it's really important. Um, just to give a little bit more of a background about MedCom and who we are. Many of you have viewed some of our presentations in the past, uh, but everything we do is under the confines of ERISA, which is a federal regulation in the U.S. that oversees health and welfare plans. So within the, within the global reach of ERISA, we support leading employers on a national basis through their employee benefit consultants. And um, th some of the specific areas that we get into include health and welfare compliance and actuarial services, uh, HIPAA privacy and security, both evaluations, assessments, and training, Affordable Care Act reporting and penalty appeal support, consumer-driven health plans, which typically would include things like flexible spending accounts, health reimbursement arrangements, and health savings accounts, all pre-tax programs to enable employees to use tax-free money for unreimbursed medical and dental expenses, and finally, COBRA premium billing administration, where we help employers navigate through the complexities of offering medical coverage for employees who leave under the COBRA regulations. Now we have some a lot of other business partners, many of whom are joining us here today, uh, but we also have a lot of partnerships within our community and extended community that help us grow leaders at MedCom Benefit Solutions. Uh, the first is Earth Charter International. Uh, we're a partner with Earth Charter International uh, they're the, the, the co-sponsor of our conversation today, and we'll talk a little bit more about some of the great programs they provide. Uh, we also partner with Health Advocate, and this ties in with a lot of our pre-tax programs where individuals have the opportunity to call and get a lot of counsel regarding getting solutions and answers in our very complicated healthcare system. Third is Junior Achievement of North Florida, where we partner to help bring financial literacy to primary care, primary school um, uh, individuals in the community. And finally, uh, the North Florida Green Chamber of Commerce, which is an organization of like-minded people who are interested in sustainability and improving our community. Before we go any further, we thought it would really be appropriate to pause for just several uh, seconds uh, to think about all of the people out there who are, who are suffering and struggling today. Um, I just saw the death count uh, internationally is close to 300,000. Uh, so we're talking millions of people who've been touched by this, this terrible pandemic. 
So let's just pause for a few seconds uh, in reflection and thinking about them. Okay. Um, as, as a business enterprise and one that's involved in employee benefits in the US, uh, we have been absolutely inundated with new information, new programs, resetting dials on regulations, creating new programs of products. Um, and just to give you an idea, in the last month, we have delivered close to 40 separate presentations uh, we've done things like introduce new products. Our, we have a disaster recovery card, as an example, where we're able to provide employers with uh, access to a provision of the IRS tax code where they can make available tax-free money to employees who are struggling as a result of COVID-19. Uh, and all of this, everything else on this on this page has really uh, been generated by changes in federal regulations over, the, for the most part, really over the last several weeks. And the reason I'm going to bring this up now is that as we continue this discussion today, one of our goals is talking about how to bring business ethics to your organization, to you personally, from a sustainable perspective. Sustainable meaning is lasting, durable, renewable, something that's going to basically be really a gift that keeps on giving without taking away from the rest of the, of the universe that we live in. So we've been very fortunate in that we work in a business where helping employee benefit consultants and our clients understand all of these complex changes in federal laws that impact on their employees and the benefits our employees have and terminated employees and all these things. Uh, the COVID-19 really in some, some ways actually helped us sustain our business. We wouldn't have asked for that in light of all the suffering going on, but from a sustainable perspective as a business enterprise, COVID-19 has been a benefit to MedCom Benefit Solutions, uh, but we, I'm going to use it in the context as we get further into this discussion about sustainability and, and business, because it's it's really more luck than than, than hard work, but we're actually uh, uh, going to be able to grow our business due to COVID-19, simply because just for, for whatever reasons, we happen to have expertise internally to help consultants and their employers figure out some of the solutions to all the changes taking place. We want to thank you again for attending. It's really our pleasure to have you here today. Some of the things that we're just, this is just uh, to hopefully provide some kind of helpful guide. Uh, like many companies in the US and other countries, uh, within a three week period of time, we went from having approximately 95% of our employees housed in our office to working virtually from home. So some of the things we've done to try to uh, break up the, the monotony of people working at home 100% of the time for the first time is we have a, we've had the good fortune to bring in some experts in the area of stress management, homeschool support, and emotional intelligence to help break up the week. So we're gonna have, for example, uh, a clinical psychologist speak to us later today about emotional intelligence uh, things like that. So I'm just sharing this because you might want to think about things like this for your employees is most likely you're confronting a lot of the same challenges that we have. So where do we go from here? Everything I've talked about so far has really been very tactical. We've talked about how COVID-19 has impacted our business. We're talking about how we've re reacted and responded to some of those changes to help provide even more support for our clients and prospects and consultants. Um, but what about planning for the future? What about a long-term perspective? What about taking another pause like we did uh, in thinking about our COVID-19 healthcare workers and people who have lost family members? What if we took a minute right now to pause and say, let's just take a second, let's take a deep breath, let's look out at the future, and do some reflection and thinking about how we can potentially make things better for not only ourselves, but our business enterprises, our communities, and the universe that we live in. So if we look for a minute under reflect, let's ask ourselves, 
how have you been impacted by COVID-19? What and how will this affect you moving forward? What's going to change about your daily life in the post-COVID-19 lifestyle? What problems were you prepared for? And probably uh, a bigger answer is what problems were you unprepared to face? Unprepared to face? And so let's just think about all those questions for a minute to give us, again, a lineup to look down the road uh, in terms of really maybe with a bigger vision of things to come and how we can have an imprint on that. Next, we'll look about what about the next phase? So we've, we've, we've thought about, gosh, um, I was most unprepared for not flying anymore. I was, I was prepared for working from home because I happened to be set up with a home office. When we move into restart, what happens next? Well, we all know that there's still thousands of questions out there that are left unanswered. Uh, all of us, depending upon what part of the country we live in, are facing different types of challenges. But what choices will we make? Will we make choices that will help us grow as individuals, as organizations, as communities, as countries, as, as a planet, or not? And how can we use this time to make long-term improvements in all aspects of our life and our extended community? Think about it. What are some things you've probably thought about? Like, what am I gonna do next time? What, what, what could I do better next time? What, what are some changes I've been putting off that I might wanna think about seriously right now for the future? And finally, when we move into Remind, that knowing that the future will never be the same, all our lives will be impacted by COVID-19. And what are things we're gonna to commit to today, perhaps, to try to restart, recalibrate our lives and our family, and our business, and our community, and our world for the better? Okay, so in terms of MedCom, uh, we're, we're, we're having this conversation we're coming back to a reliable partner, which is Earth Charter International. The Earth Charter was constructed just about 20 years ago. It'll be 20, it has a 20, 20 year anniversary at the end of June, 2020. And it was actually a six year development project that included thought leaders from around the world, but even more importantly, thousands of individuals worldwide who came together and said, what would it take for us to move forward with a sustainable global society where we could tap into all the things we have in common and have a more sustainable, ethical world for all of us to live in. Uh, MedCom has had the, the privilege to be a partner with Earth Charter International for about eight months. And during that time, approximately 25% of our employees have had the good fortune to attend an Earth Charter class and learn about ethical leadership, learn about ethical decision-making, and we've been able to quantify the value to our company to the point where we have embedded into our employee development programs of all kinds. And our goal will be to get the other 75% enrolled in an Earth Charter class within the next 12 months. Uh, but part of that also at MedCom is reaching out beyond our specific business, our business enterprise to the community that we live in. So we've had the opportunity as well to export information about Earth Charter International classes. They have a first class uh, educational center that's based in San, San Jose, Costa Rica. And um, that's where we go for the content for the class we'll talk about today, as well as, uh, as well as other classes that help us, again, focus on how do we build ethical leaders? How do we build ethical decision makers so we can run our business more responsibly, ethically, and bring more value to the people we serve? Now, the, the, the charter itself is composed of 16 unique pillars, they're called, that tie in with a lot of the things that we can do collectively to make the world a better place. The four key pillars, and I think it's really important, particularly as we look at COVID-19 and its impact on all of us, in terms of how these four pillars play into that next chapter we just talked about, you making this transition, being reflective, 
reaching out and saying, what, what can we do differently going forward? Uh, respect and care for the community of life is one of the, one of the four pillars. Um, I can tell you personally, one of the most beautiful parts of being home confined for me has been to spend time in my own backyard and see, see the life, to see the new growth, to see uh, forms of life that we haven't seen for a long period of time because there's less pollution in the air. Uh, ecological integrity. Um, Mallory Hopkins, who's on this call, who will speak in a few minutes, uh, actually did a first class video documentary on the city of St. Augustine, which is just south of Jacksonville on rising water levels and how it's gonna impact on that whole oldest city in the US. So ecological integrity is another um, foundational pillar of, of the Earth Charter. Uh, and it ties in with almost everything we do. Uh, we, when we look at the impact of COVID-19, it's actually pretty amazing when you think about it, because I think most of you have read some of the stories. We are, for example, in the state of Washington on the west coast of the US, there, there are forms of life, in, in water life, that people thought were extinct that are now showing up again. Uh, there, there are life forms in other communities that people thought were extinct that are showing up again. So we've had this approximately two month period when people have been home confined for the most part, but it's basically enabled Mother Earth to heal. Mother Earth is now showing herself, in fact, she can heal when we, when we don't have two months of people driving millions of cars every day. Social and economic justice. Um, we've all read the stories about how COVID-19 uh, is not a very fair pandemic in terms of how it impacts on people that live next door to us or down the street or in our community. Uh, people that are of certain racial um, dispositions have been impacted more. People at the lower end of the socioeconomic spec spectrum have, have suffered more. People confined in nursing homes have suffered more. What are some things when we're looking forward that we can think about and be involved with uh, and make an imprint in our lives to change something like this next time so that's not quite as inequitable? And finally, democracy, nonviolence, and peace. It's really interesting, um, just in the state of Florida, and I wish I could figure this out, uh, we have one city who has seen an almost 100% um, drop in their murder rate over the last two months. And then we have another city in the exact same state where the murder rate has gone up as a result during this whole COVID-19 uh, time, time frame. So it's really remarkable, but we, we've also seen signs around the world, not just in the US, where COVID-19 and a lot of the structure that uh, governments can impose on people uh, has taken away some democratic principles and some freedoms that people have, uh, and that could be dangerous long term. And then finally, I just want to mention just the just the term democracy. In many cases, we view that as a as a form of governance, but it's really a form of conflict resolution as well. And it's just a matter of learning more about this as we've done uh, for those of us that have attended Earth Charter classes. Um, and one more thing I'd like to mention before I, I turn the program over to Mallory Hopkins is that I'm personally committed to the Earth Charter um, and I'm also enrolled in, in this class that uh, Dr. Bean will talk about in a few minutes. But we wanted to just spend another few minutes of time to demonstrate to you that not only are the Earth Charter classes where we're, where we're, we're raising the bar in ethical leadership and ethical decision making, it's not just something that is maintained within the walls of our business. We've used this as an export tool to partner with other members of our community. We've had uh, local teachers who've enrolled in the same classes with MedCom employees at, at Earth Charter. We've had people from social services agencies. Uh, and it's now my pleasure to turn the, the conversation over to Mallory Hopkins. And she's gonna share uh, in just a few minutes how we have embedded Earth Charter principles within internal committees at MedCom to better serve all the constituents in our, our extended community. So Mallory? Thank you, Michael. So internally, MedCom has created and developed three volunteer committees for staff to be a part of. These committees are just one element of MedCom's expression of the Earth Charter's four pillars, and they directly put them into action. 
Sustainable MedCom works to provide an opportunity for MedCom employees to create better, more sustainable ways of working and living in our community. This committee, committee applies two of the Earth Charter pillars. Obviously, the first is ecological integrity, but the pillar that applies to respect and care for the community of life can also be applied. As the first Earth Charter pillar, I think this can be applied to all walks of life and can be seen and shown through all three committees. MedCom Outreach works to give back to the community by providing education, personal assistance items, and support where it's needed most. This, this committee addresses social economic justice and, of course, respect and care for the community of life. The Phoenix Committee works to organize and develop new ways to energize and motivate our internal MedCom team members throughout the year. This committee addresses democracy, nonviolence, and peace, and also respect and care for the community of life. To provide some examples of these principles in action, I want to mention a few things that MedCom has done to express them. Our employees have taught the Constitution and the Bill of Rights in local high schools. We have provided scholarships for local refugees for public speaking and personal development classes. We have provided financial instruction and education to local school children. We have taken part in community cleanup projects along the St. John's River and in our urban core. And we have provided personal hygiene items to less fortunate students. Earth Charter International is introducing a brand new course titled Business and Ethical Leadership for Sustainability. This online course is available for anyone to register and starts in just a few weeks on June 1st. This course will be facilitated by Dr. Chris Beener, who Michael has introduced. Dr. Beener is currently a business professor at Seminole State College in Florida. He has experience in supply chain management and nonprofit leadership. He has published a book titled System Leadership for Sustainability and has extensive knowledge of workplace spirituality, sustainable business, and leadership. With that, I'll hand it over to Dr. Beener to review the themes and goals of the course. Thank you very much, Mallory. I'm really glad to be here and, and excited to talk about this uh, educational opportunity. Um, the course is structured with uh, three underlying themes of it's interactive. It's not a course where you log in online, read things, take a test and then get a certificate. It's interactive. There are discussions um, to encourage uh, students or participants from all over the world to share their ideas and share their experiences and learn from each other. It's experiential because again, it's not simply quizzing and testing and writing a report. The um, end deliverable in the course is conducting an ethics assessment of uh, your organization or an organization you're familiar with and trying to um, quantify where the organization is in terms of ethics and sustainability. And it's engaging. There will be uh, videos, there will be live webinars that students can attend. Um, there will be uh, activities that again are more meaningful than simply a, a traditional course um, you know, question and answer, memorize content, and then get a certificate. And underlying all of this, I want to emphasize that this, again, it's not simply a knowledge transfer where we'll, I, I will, and the Earth Charter will teach the participants about ethics. Um, it's a decision-making course where uh, everyone who takes the course will learn how to uh, apply ethics, apply various ethical frameworks, um, in the decision-making process. And, and again, um, the, the business dynamic has changed so much uh, just in the past few weeks and months that uh, present opportunities and challenges ethically. So there, there are four goals uh, we, we will achieve with the course. Um, the first is to identify the ethical challenges that business leaders face in the 21st century. And again, when I started developing this and, and talking about this course in the fall and immediately thought about at the turn of the millennium, the uh, ethical crises we had in business where um, WorldCom and Enron and various multi-billion dollar corporations collapsed uh, 
as a result of unethical behavior. Um, within a few years of that, we had the uh, financial crisis that began in the United States with, uh, again, unethical and questionable business practices that led to the greatest economic recession since the 1930s. And then just again, in the past two months, we've we've seen COVID and uh, we're in uncharted territory. We don't know what the outcome will be economically, socially, financially from COVID, but it presents ethical challenges that uh, business leaders will have to make difficult decisions about staffing, about uh, operations, about rehiring people in the future. And it's so important today that those decisions that uh, difficult decisions that have to be made will be made in an ethical manner. The second goal is to review the role and responsibility of business in social and environmental justice. Uh, decades ago, and for perhaps centuries, the, the thought, the compelling thought in business was the goal of every business is to make money, make a profit, and if your shareholders want to take their profit and do good with it, that's their business, if they want to be philanthropists. But the goal of business was purely making money. And that's still a, a primary goal. I'll never try to tell a business person they shouldn't be making money. But what's happened over the past few decades with various social challenges and environmental challenges is that more and more business leaders are realizing that, yes, I have to make money, I must be profitable, but I must think about what is my impact on my community, on society, and on the environment. And so in this course, we will explore the role and responsibility of business leaders in, in these areas. The third goal is to highlight and put into practice the vision of sustainability that's articulated in the Earth Charter. And also, we will look at the relevance of business ethics not just with the Earth Charter, but with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And the two that are most critical to business that we'll be talking about will be Goal 8, which is Responsible Consumption and Production, and Goal 12, which is Decent Work and Economic Growth. And the final course goal is, will be assessing the ethical sustainability performance of business and industry. And again, the final um, deliverable for the course will be that the participants will either individually or as a group assess their own business or another business to determine based on the, the 16 principles of the Earth Charter, based on the UN SDGs, where is this business sustainably and ethically, what are the strengths, what are the weaknesses and areas of improvement and, and have a better understanding of, of where that organization is. Okay, thank you, Chris. Dr. Beener, um, I can recall when I was in college, I had a very soft-spoken philosophy professor who I loved, and he told the story one time, the first exam that he proctored when he became a professor at this particular college, uh, he asked one question, one word, a one-word question, which was why? And one of his students responded, in about five minutes and left the lecture hall because he had completed his answer. And his answer was, why not? And um, he gave him an A. And I'm gonna ask the same question today is why not now? Why not now in terms of us looking at new strategies, approaches to improve our business, improve the, the people that work and support our business, improve our extended communities. Uh, and that's why we really wanna spend some more time talking about this, this course that has been introduced by Earth Charter International entitled Business and Ethical Leadership for Sustainability. All right, some logistics, as Dr. Beener mentioned, it's, it's coming up pretty quickly. The class starts June 1st. If you look to the right and it runs through the 24th of July, it's an eight week course. It's online based, but it's facilitated by Dr. Beener. Uh, and so three, three of the eight sessions will actually be where you have an opportunity to communicate with your uh, fellow students as well as Dr. Beener 
as you move through the course. Uh, it's a great time to be looking about your business and how to improve it. And as, as we talked a little bit earlier, uh, the term sustainability is frequently used um, in the spirit of an ecological integrity, uh, but it, it has to also do with the social world we live in as well as our economic world and your business. So um, we, we can vouch for the fact that um, programs like this one that we're discussing have helped us not only in terms of growing ethical leaders and ethical decision makers, but it's also through, by virtue of those internal committees that Maori discussed a little bit earlier, uh, we've, we've basically delegated and created more or less a democratic approach where the committees within the organization are driving how we communicate and, pr and partner with other organizations within the community ultimately get the result we all want, which is a more sustainable community as well as business. So as an Earth Charter partner, and because you're a partner of ours by virtue of joining us here today, we're pleased to let everyone know that um, MedCom will underwrite the cost of a 25% discount for anybody who would like to attend or anybody from your company who would like to attend, extended family. Um, I'll personally be involved in taking the course, as I mentioned, along with several other people from MedCom Benefit Solutions. Uh, we are committed to helping you and your business achieve sustainability. Uh, and the, 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 the effective value of the discount is $150. So the, the retail price for the program is $599. Uh, if you enroll through the MedCom portal that we'll, we'll show you in a minute, uh, the, the fee will be, will be reduced to 450. And in some small way, we're trying to reach out and extend our partnerships around the country beyond just Jacksonville, where we're domiciled as a company. And we really would encourage each of you to think about it or share with some of your coworkers or friends or partners. And as I mentioned, uh, as long as the, uh, the, the application goes through the portal, we'll show you um, next, uh, the $150 discount will apply. Okay, and this is it. So if um, is this is a takeaway and each of you will be receiving a copy of this presentation, both hard copy and the recorded version. And so you'll have access to this same link in the event that you would like to enroll. So uh, we highly encourage it. Again, we, we, we hope for selfish reasons, since several MedCom people will be taking the course, we'd love to basically have another opportunity to connect with you. So please think about it. Uh, and again, as I mentioned, share it with uh, your your organization, your community, your family. Uh, we'd love for a number of you to participate with us uh, in helping even at a deeper level build ethical leadership and ethical decision-making within our respective organizations. Okay, well, we wanna thank everybody. I wanna thank Dr. Beener uh, again for his valuable contributions. Mallory Hopkins, thank you for all your contributions. Casey Hope as well. and. Um, We'd now like to open up to any questions that anybody has. Casey? Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Dr. Beener. And thank you, Mallory, um, for guiding us today, giving us all of this very important and relevant information, especially during this um, uncertain time um, when we all have a lot of questions and, and need a lot of direction. Um, I, I am opening this up for any questions. If you have questions for anyone on this panel today, please go ahead and submit those into the questions panel of your GoToWebinar, and we will go ahead and address those now. Um, so uh, Dr. Beener, this, most of the questions that we've received are, are directly related to the course. Um, what type of projects, um, whether it be um, group projects or individual projects, Will we be participating in? Can can you give us a, a little indication of what kind of projects this class requires? Yes, um, there will be a weekly project. Um, most of them are are smaller. The, each week there's a, a theme in the session, and it might involve re watching a video or reading an article about an ethical scenario, and then either engaging in a discussion forum with peers where. Um, a participant would comment what they felt, what, what they learned, what they would have done in the scenario, and then other participants will dialogue back and forth. Uh, some weeks it will be a similar with a video or reading, but then there will be a short essay where the participants encouraged to reflect on 
again, how would what decision would you make or how would you behave in this scenario if it happened within your company or your organization? What would you do? And it's kind of a self-reflection. The the main deliverable which students or participants begin near the end of the course or around week six is the ethics and sustainability assessment. And it can be done, each person can do their own or um, people can team up from the same company, but it will involve, um, we provide tools. There's a tool, um, EC Assess, which is from the Earth Charter. It's a tool for or with, um, for breaking down various areas of ethics and sustainability and identifying those within the organization. And it, it's just a, a, it's a tool and a project to encourage participants to look at the organization critically and what are our strengths, what are our weaknesses, what do we need to do different, and then produce that as a um, written report. It's not a dissertation, it's, it's you know, very concise and then make a short presentation about it, you know, perhaps a five minute PowerPoint presentation, just describing what you learned and what the strengths and, and ethical weaknesses of the organization are and what, what can, be, can be done to fix that. Thank you, um, appreciate that um, clarification and that, that detail. Will participants be able to give, have any type of certificate of completion um, once they finish the class? Yes, the Earth Charter will issue a uh, certificate of, of completion um, sometime after the eight-week course is, is over. Great. And um, how many hours per week could, could you estimate that it would require for people to spend? Um, we believe it'll take about three to four hours per week, and it not, does not all have to be done in one session. Um, it could be 15 minutes, 30 minutes at a time, but probably three to four hours per week. And then week seven and eight, there's no formal class because you're, uh, the participants are working on the project. And again, it depends on how much time they devote. And again, we're doing it as a group. Obviously, many hands make light work. So if three or four people work together on a project versus one, it you know, shouldn't take more than three to four hours a week during the last two weeks as well. That makes perfect sense. Thank you. Um, and I believe the last question that we have here, um, unless anyone has any last minute questions, you can go ahead and feel free to submit those. Um, Dr. Beener, who will benefit most from this class? Um, both management and employees of businesses are, are who we're primarily targeting. Um, often in, in traditional business schools and MBA programs, the target is managers. Let's teach the managers to be good managers, to be ethical, et cetera. But th they often forget that the employees are the ones who do the work. They're the, the workers that accomplish what the managers want. So either group, a manager of a business or an employee who may or may not ever want to be a manager could benefit from learning more about ethics and, and how to make ethical decisions. Thank you so much, Dr. Beener. And um, just wanna go ahead and point out on the screen, if you have any other questions that were not addressed today, if you think of some after this webinar is over, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, you can email Mallory directly at mhopkins at medcombenefits.com. If you're ready to enroll in the course, the um, MedCom specific URL is here. Um, it's earthcharter.education with, um, and we'll make sure you get this information when we send out the slides and the recording after this webinar concludes. And then just to learn um, a little bit more about MedCom benefits and how we partner with Earth Charter, um, that's the last URL you will see on the screen, um, and we will make sure you have this information, as I said, when we send it out. Um, we are going to conclude for today. Thank you again to Dr. Beener for joining us, for giving us a little bit of information about the class, um, and really uh, providing just some, some excellent insight about um, what you hope to achieve. Um, Mallory, thank you so much for the effort that you have put together in this presentation and for Earth Charter and the Sustainable MedCom initiatives. And Michael, thank you for being here um, and, and sharing your knowledge and insights as well. Casey, could I make one closing comment? 
Absolutely. Yeah, Michael's story about the professor and, and asking the, the philosophical question why it kind of spurred a, a, an afterthought because I teach sustainable business courses and ethics courses um, at not only Seminole State College, but an, another institution. And often people come to me and say, why? Why should I care about sustainability as a business manager? Um, people don't ask as much, why should I be ethical? Because I think they'd be too embarrassed to ask that. But often people ask, why? Why does all of this matter? And it, your, the, your customers are demanding it. Your customers, having been through all of these crises, more and more customers and suppliers are demanding that people do, do business fair and ethically and also sustainably that uh, we're, we're recognizing the, the footprint we're having on the planet and that we need to change that. And so I believe there's a compelling argument that if you want your business to not only survive, but to thrive into the future, uh, if you are not thinking about ethics and sustainable, that's, that's, a, dangerous, uh, that's a dangerous equation. You're, that, that I think it's compelling for any business leader to say, I've got to have an ethical and sustainable perspective in my business if I want to, to compete. Absolutely, 100%. Michael, um, did you have any final thoughts or comments you would like to include? No, we just wanted to thank everybody uh, for attending again this afternoon. Um, yeah, we have the ability from where I sit and Casey sits to actually track attendance. And it uh, looks like we, we, we about 100% of the people who started this conversation are still here. Uh, we know your time is very valuable. There's a lot of distractions with COVID-19. We know you could be a lot of other places. And thank you for sharing the last 44 minutes with us. Uh, and uh, as Casey already mentioned, if we can help with any, any other this particular course. Uh, we'd love to talk about it. Uh, and uh, more importantly, we'd love to have the opportunity to get you get to know you and maybe some of your co-workers better by virtue of joining us in the class to, so that we can hopefully uh, make a further make further progress in developing ethical leaders and ethical decision makers within ourselves and within our organization and with our extended community. So thanks again for attending. We really appreciate it and we hope you have a great evening.